Walk into a pharmacy or health food store today and you'll see shelves lined with magnesium supplements everywhere. They're marketed for better sleep, less stress, stronger bones, healthier hearts, even more energy. Some people swear by magnesium gummies or capsules. But the question is, do they really work? And more importantly, do you actually need one? Well, the truth is magnesium is an essential mineral, meaning your body literally can't function without it. It's involved in over 300 different processes in the body, from keeping your heart rhythm steady to helping your muscles contract. It also helps regulate blood sugar and even nerve signals. But here's the surprising part. While most of us don't get enough magnesium in our diets, severe deficiency is actually pretty rare. And while magnesium supplements can help in certain situations like high blood pressure, migraines, or true deficiency, they're not the mere miracle cure that social media sometimes makes them out to be. So in this episode, we'll break down exactly what magnesium does, the best dietary sources, what the science actually shows about supplements, and who really needs them. And stay with me till the end, because I'll share the one group of people who benefit most from magnesium supplementation and why the average healthy person might not need a pill at all. So let's start with the basics. What exactly is magnesium? Medically speaking, magnesium is an essential mineral, meaning your body cannot make it on its own. You have to get it from food. It's involved in more than 300 different enzymatic reactions that keep your body running properly. Some of the most important roles include, number one, muscle function. Magnesium helps muscles contract and relax properly. Without it, you can get cramps or spasms. Then it's also involved in nerve signals. It regulates how your nerves send messages, keeping the nervous system balanced. Magnesium is also involved in energy production. It's required to convert food into energy at the cellular level. Magnesium is also involved in heart health. It helps regulate heart rhythm and blood pressure, something I was very familiar with as a cardiovascular surgeon. Magnesium also plays a key role in bone strength. About 50 to 60% of the magnesium in your body is actually stored in bone, where it works alongside calcium and vitamin D. Even though magnesium is so critical, only about 1% of the body's total magnesium is found in the blood. That means blood tests can sometimes be misleading. You can have symptoms of low magnesium even if your blood levels look normal. The daily recommended intake or the RDA is around 400 to 420 milligrams for men and about 310 to 320 milligrams for women. Most people don't reach this amount through diet but again that doesn't always mean you're truly deficient. Let me give you a plain English analogy. Think of magnesium like the spark plug in your body's engine. Just like a spark plug ignites fuel so a car can run, magnesium helps fire up hundreds of chemical reactions that keep your body moving from your heartbeat to your muscles to your brain. Without enough spark plugs, the engine misfires and so does your body. So magnesium is not optional. It's absolutely essential, but whether you need a supplement depends on your diet, your health, and your individual risk factors. So where do we actually get magnesium and why do so many people fall short? Dietary sources of magnesium are found in a wide range of whole plant-based foods, especially those rich in fiber. Some of the best sources include leafy green vegetables like spinach, kale, and Swiss chard. I have to love those. Magnesium is also found in nuts and seeds like almonds, cashews, pumpkin seeds, and sunflower seeds. Another good source of magnesium is whole grains like oats, brown rice, and quinoa. It's also found in beans and legumes like black beans, lentils, and chickpeas. Magnesium is actually, believe it or not, also found in fish like salmon and mackerel. These are fatty fish, which are generally very good for you anyhow. And then a lot of people are going to be happy to hear this one. Magnesium is found in dark chocolate. Yes, even that contains magnesium in meaningful amounts. Here's a key tip. Foods that are minimally processed are high in fiber and usually have magnesium. Refining grains or heavily processing foods tends to strip magnesium out. Here's one of the reasons most people don't get enough magnesium. It's because because they're eating diets that are high in processed foods and low in vegetables and whole grains. Another important thing is over farming and soil depletion. Some experts believe our food has less magnesium than it did decades ago for these reasons. Another thing is that older adults often eat less magnesium rich foods, plus their bodies absorb it less efficiently. So who's at risk for true deficiency? Well, true severe magnesium deficiency is actually uncommon in healthy people, but certain groups are more vulnerable. People with gastrointestinal 
conditions like Crohn's disease, celiac disease, or chronic diarrhea all have poor absorption issues going on. And people with uncontrolled diabetes also have increased magnesium loss through the urine. Those with alcohol dependence also often show increased magnesium loss. Older adults have less dietary intake and lower absorption. People on certain medications, including diuretics, proton pump inhibitors for acid reflux, and some antibiotics will also show magnesium deficiency. Now let's talk about symptoms of deficiency. Early signs include fatigue, loss of appetite and nausea. As deficiency worsens, muscle cramps, twitching, tingling, and even an irregular heartbeat can be seen. In severe cases, this is usually in hospitalized patients, seizures and dangerous heart arrhythmias can occur, and you may also find low calcium or potassium levels associated. Here's another analogy for you. Think of magnesium like the oil in your car. If the level's a little low, the car still runs. Maybe not perfectly, but you don't notice it right away. If it gets too low, though, the engine starts sputtering and breaking down. In the same way, mild magnesium shortages may not cause obvious symptoms, but severe deficiency can cause serious, even life-threatening problems. So while full-blown deficiency is rare, many people are living with less than optimal magnesium intake. And that's where diet and sometimes supplements come into play. Magnesium is sometimes marketed as a miracle mineral. While it's not a cure-all, there are several areas where research shows clearly real measurable benefits. Let's break them down now. Number one is blood pressure control. Multiple studies have shown that magnesium supplementation can lead to small but meaningful reductions in blood pressure, especially in people with hypertension to begin with. It works by relaxing the smooth muscles in the blood vessel walls, allowing them to dilate. The effect isn't dramatic like a prescription drug, but even a two to four millimeter of mercury drop in blood pressure can lower the risk of stroke and heart attack at the population level. Here's another analogy for you. Think of magnesium as loosening a tight belt around your waist. It lets the blood vessels relax and then eases the pressure just a bit. Magnesium also has an effect on heart rhythm. Magnesium plays a key role in the electrical signal of the heart. In hospitals, magnesium is used to treat certain dangerous arrhythmias like something called torsade de point. For everyday people, low magnesium may increase the risk of palpitations or irregular heart rhythm. Maintaining healthy magnesium levels support supports steady, reliable heartbeats. Now let's talk about bone health. About 50 to 60% of your body's magnesium is actually stored in the bone. It works alongside calcium and vitamin D to build and maintain strong bones. This is really important. So low magnesium intake is linked with lower bone density and higher fracture risk over time. Another area where magnesium comes into play is migraines. Some research suggests magnesium deficiency contributes to migraine attacks. Clinical trials show that supplementation can reduce the frequency and severity of migraines in certain patients. That's why magnesium is sometimes recommended as part of a migraine prevention program. Next is blood sugar and diabetes. Magnesium helps regulate insulin action and glucose metabolism. Low magnesium is associated with a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Supplementation may improve insulin sensitivity and blood sugar control, especially in people who are deficient. Now let's take a look at muscle and nerve function. Magnesium is essential for muscle contraction action and relaxation. That's why deficiency causes cramps, spasms, and twitching. Some evidence suggests supplementation may reduce muscle cramps. The results are mixed, and it's most effective in people who are deficient to begin with. One of my areas of expertise is venous disease, and many times I see people with night cramps and leg cramps that have underlying venous disease. So if that's a chronic problem for you, have your primary care doctor send you to a vein specialist for an evaluation. It's not always magnesium. Here's a key takeaway for you. Magnesium has pre Proven science-backed benefits for blood pressure, heart rhythm, bone strength, migraine prevention, and blood sugar control. But here's the very important part. Most of these benefits show up when somebody is low in magnesium to begin with. If you already get enough from your diet, taking more doesn't necessarily mean extra benefit. Now I want to talk to you about some of the myths and exaggerated claims that surround magnesium. With all the buzz around magnesium, it's no surprise that a lot of exaggerated claims have popped up. Let's separate fact from fiction. Myth one is that magnesium Magnesium guarantees perfect sleep. It's true magnesium plays a role in calming the nervous system and regulating melatonin. Some small studies have shown that people with low magnesium may sleep better after supplementation. But for the average person with normal levels, magnesium is not a magic sleep pill. It might help, but it's not guaranteed. Myth number two is that magnesium cures anxiety and depression. Now, while low magnesium is linked to higher rates of anxiety and depression, it's not going to be a cure-all. Some studies suggest supplementation can help reduce 
symptoms, but the effects are modest and also inconsistent. Magnesium should be seen as a supportive nutrient, not a replacement for proven treatments like therapy or prescribed medication when it comes to depression and anxiety. Myth number three is that more magnesium equals more energy. Because magnesium is involved in energy production at the cellular level, some supplements are sold as energy boosters. Here's the truth. If you're deficient, restoring magnesium can help you feel more energetic. But if your levels are already normal, taking extra won't give you a sudden energy surge. Now we come to myth number four, that magnesium detoxes the body or detoxifies the body. This is pure marketing hype. Your liver and your kidneys do the detoxing, not supplements. Magnesium supports many processes, but it doesn't flush out toxins like some influencers claim. Myth five is that everyone needs a magnesium supplement. Not true. Many people can meet their needs through a good, healthy, well-balanced diet. Supplements are most helpful for people with deficiency, certain medical conditions, or specific issues like migraines or high blood pressure. The key takeaway is that magnesium is important, yes, but it's definitely not a miracle cure. Think of it as a foundation nutrient, essential when you're lacking, supportive when your body needs it, but not a magic bullet that solves every problem. In fact, nothing is. If you decide to take a magnesium supplement, not all forms are created equal. Let's look at the main types and what you need to know about the safety. First, there's magnesium oxide. This is one of the most common, inexpensive forms. The drawback is it's poorly absorbed and only about 4% actually gets into your bloodstream. Because it draws water into the intestines, it's also more likely to cause diarrhea or stomach upset. This is often used short term as a laxative, but not the best choice for raising magnesium levels. The second form is magnesium citrate. This is better absorbed than the oxide form. This is frequently used for constipation since it still has a mild laxative effect. This is also a good option if you want both magnesium support and relief from occasional constipation. Then we come to magnesium glycinate. This is highly bioavailable, meaning it's very well absorbed. It's gentle on the stomach and less likely to cause diarrhea. Magnesium glycinate is often marketed for sleep, relaxation, or anxiety support. Not because it's a sedative, but because it's well tolerated and easy to take long term. Another form of magnesium is magnesium chloride. It has good absorption and it's sometimes used in topical sprays, though skin absorption evidence is actually quite limited. Then we come to magnesium sulfate, which is better known as Epsom salts, used in baths for sore muscles. It actually has limited absorption through the skin, but it can be used medically via an intravenous. Yet another form of magnesium is magnesium malate or taurate, sometimes marketed for muscle pain or heart rhythm, though evidence is limited compared to citrate or glycinate. The recommended dietary allowance of magnesium is about 400 to 420 milligrams per day for men and about 310 to 320 milligrams per day for women. From supplements alone, the safe upper limit is 350 milligrams per day, not counting food sources. Now, taking too much magnesium can cause diarrhea, nausea, or in extreme cases, dangerously low blood pressure and irregular heart rhythms. People with kidney disease must be especially cautious because their bodies can't clear excess magnesium and levels can actually build up to toxic levels in the bloodstream. Here's another analogy for you. Think of magnesium supplements like different tools in a toolbox. Some are heavy duty, but messy, like oxide. Some are versatile and reliable, like citrate. And some are precise and easy to take, like glycinate. The right tool depends on the job, and for most people, less is more. Another key takeaway is if you're going to supplement with magnesium, choose the right form for your needs, stick with safe doses, and always consider food first. Supplements should fill the gap, not replace a healthy diet. And always speak to your doctor, your pharmacist, or your nutritionist about which supplement would be best for you. This is the million dollar question. Who really benefits from magnesium supplementation? The truth is not everyone needs a pill, but there are a certain group where supplementation makes a real difference. The first group who needs supplementation is the group with proven deficiency. If blood work or symptoms suggest low magnesium, supplements can correct the problem quickly. This is common in hospitalized patients, especially with malnutrition or chronic illnesses. Then there are people with certain medical conditions, like gastrointestinal diseases such as Crohn's disease, celiac disease, or chronic diarrhea, which reduce absorption. Uncontrolled diabetes, which causes the kidneys to waste magnesium, is another place where people might run low and need supplementation. Again, alcohol dependence is an area 
area where people can become deficient in magnesium because alcohol both lowers intake and increases losses. Older adults who often eat less magnesium-rich foods and absorb it less efficiently may also find that they have low levels and need supplementation. Then there are people on specific medications. Diuretics are what we call water pills that are often used for blood pressure control and heart failure management can actually flush magnesium out. This is something your doctor should be following for you if you're on these medications. Another group is proton pump inhibitors, which are used for acid reflux. And if these are used long-term, they can also reduce absorption absorption from the intestinal tract. Certain antibiotics and chemotherapy drugs also lower magnesium levels. Then we come to people with specific conditions. Migraines, for example, might require supplementation because it's been shown to reduce the frequency in some patients. It's inconsistent and not a cure-all. Patients with high blood pressure may find a modest improvement when combined with other treatments. Patients with arrhythmias or abnormal heart rhythms may find that magnesium is given, especially when they're in a hospital, for a significant significant heart rhythm problem. One important point I want to bring out is that for the average healthy person eating a varied diet, supplements may not provide much extra benefit at all. Food sources are almost always better absorbed and come packaged with other nutrients that your body needs, oftentimes fiber as well. So magnesium supplements aren't necessary for everyone, but for people who are deficient, at higher risk, or dealing with certain conditions, then they can be incredibly valuable. So let's wrap this up. Magnesium is an essential mineral that your body uses in hundreds of processes from muscle and nerve function to regulating blood sugar and blood pressure, as well as heart rhythm and bone health. Today, we've covered what magnesium is and why it's so important, where it comes from, leafy greens, nuts, seeds, beans, whole greens, and even dark chocolate. Who's at risk for deficiency? Well, it's people with certain GI conditions, uncontrolled diabetes, older adults, people with alcohol dependence, and those on medications like diuretics or proton pump inhibitors. There are some proven benefits with regard to blood pressure, arrhythmia prevention, migraine reduction, bone health, and even insulin sensitivity. Activity. But there are also some myths. It's not a magic sleep pill. It's not a cure for anxiety and depression. It's not even an energy booster if your levels are already normal. And it definitely does not detox the body. A quick recap on the supplement forms and safety. Remember, not all magnesium is the same. Citrate and glycinate are better absorbed than oxide, but too much can cause diarrhea or dangerous side effects, especially in people with kidney disease. So who really needs it? The answer is simple. Those with true deficiency or certain health conditions or are on specific medications being followed by a doctor with blood levels. For most healthy people, food is the best source. Now here's the bottom line. Magnesium is powerful when you need it, but the best way to get it is still through a balanced diet. If you suspect a deficiency or have a condition that puts you at risk, talk to your doctor or your healthcare provider before starting a supplement. Magnesium is not a miracle pill, but it's a foundation mineral. Get it right and give your body one of the most important tools it needs to stay healthy. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please share it with someone who's considering supplements and let us know in the comments, do you take magnesium? And if so, why? And what have you noticed since you've started? Don't forget to subscribe for more evidence-based guidance on supplements, nutrition, and heart health so you can separate fact from hype and make the best choices for your body. I'll see you in the next video.